guys so i'm going to do a book review this evening it's the first michael crichton book that i'm going to review for you um he's one of my favorite authors and probably up there with stephen king as one of the best writers i've um, come across for fictional books um just finished one of his um uh one of his books and all the most well-known one uh probably the most well-known michael crichton book would be jurassic park um a lot of them have, were, have been made into movies like obviously Jurassic Park, I don't know how many movies there are now, like, I think it's like six. Um, Congo was another one, but the one I'm going to focus on tonight was also made into a movie in 2003. Um, this book is called Timeline and with a lot of Michael Crichton books there is the main sort of engaging plot with it, um, the action plot and then there's a sort of undercurrent of um, sort of uh, as, as it's written at, um, at the time cutting edge um, scientific in information and um, cutting edge technology which thrusts the characters into the uh, into the action then but um, yeah so with this one timeline this was book this book was written in 1999 um, I've recently read it on the Kindle um, it wasn't too bad at all actually it was 512 pages and it was quite engaging as well um, pretty good um, once you've read one or two of my Crichton books uh, just Jurassic Park Congo are the ones that I've read previously you start to get the flavor of the way in which his books are structured um, the, type, the the archetype characters that, that, that you come across as well the action then as well the setup um, he's very very good at exposition in his books um, and uh, the plots are very uh, are excellent overall particularly timeline so what what is this book about so essentially timeline is uh, a story about um, a company much like InGen in uh, Jurassic Park you've got a company uh, ITC uh, they, one of their employees is found wandering through the desert um, in I think it's New Mexico and is picked up by a police officer and taken to the local hospital the guy looks quite elderly and uh, he is wearing sort of uh, drab garbs and, every, and, and all this type of stuff no information really other than the fact that he had this information to say that he worked for a company called ITC um, when he's in the hospital he's dying of some uh, undiagnosed um, problem with his blood vessels and his internal composition um, very very strange he keeps on muttering the same words and this police officer there's a police officer who then takes up the information to find out what is going on where did this person come from so that's the initial setup of the story uh, to get you hooked and and then we are then taken to um, France southern France where ITC the company have sponsored an archaeological um, dig with a professor by the name of Edward Johnston and his team of archaeologists um, it's quite a varied group uh, that, that they have there there's two undergraduates so two of the main characters in the book you have Chris Hughes and Kate Erickson both undergraduates um, one of the, uh, uh, the main the main assistant for the professor is Marek Andre so Marek is more of the sort of uh, more mature student post grad sort of uh, more I, I, I read him as more of like a PhD student if already he'd already had a PhD um, really really gifted character who sp spoke multiple languages such as French uh, and in that region at that time they spoke Occitan um, in southern France um, they you know really a character who re was really believably immersed into the sort of the, the medieval world where he had lessons on sword fighting archery horse riding uh, medieval style of combat um, mil uh, mil military warfare whereas um, whereas so there, there are other other characters who are more on the periphery you have one who's a linguist one who studies the sort of uh, the the way documents are written back then you have one who is like a understands the layout of buildings and somebody who understands the dress and fashion of the time all those but really the main characters in the book in the book are the professor Edward Johnston Chris Hughes the undergraduate Kate Erickson, the undergraduate, and Marek Andre, the professor's assistant. So we're introduced to these characters. They're in southern France in a dig, and 
they are digging uh, there are two castles either side of a river you've got castle guard on one side and la Roque on the other side and either castle is uh, both of them are under control during the 100 years war um, so the 100 years war was a conflict between uh, France and England uh, more so the French kingdom and the English kingdom not as nation states as we know them today but it was a bit of a, it was a dynastic struggle about who believed that they owned certain parts of France and who was the rightful king of France um, and at this time 1357 is where the book is eventually set you have uh, one side which is Castle Guard is controlled by the English and La Roque is controlled by the French just to set that out so essentially where the where you get the initial plunge into the book then after discovering this guy in the desert is that um, you have Edward Johnston is liaising with a couple of people from uh, ITC who come to inspect the dig and they sort of let in on quite a subs quite a, a bit of uh, unique information information that would be pretty much privileged to the in it, to the dig the diggers themselves the archaeologists and even ITC were, were had known information about the dig prior to the discovery of that information so we get the professor who is suspicious of something here that why does this company know more than it's letting on so he decides to fly out to New Mexico uh, or Arizona I think one of those uh, western states I think it's Arizona actually um, to speak to the head of ITC which is this character called Robert Doninger and Robert Doninger, Doninger is more of your um, uh, I, I read him as a, as a bit of a Mark Zuckerberg type um, but with at least with a personality unlike Zuckerberg um, Doninger is one of your sort of early uh, one of your 90s tech um, startup people who uh, is on his way building a huge empire with cutting edge technology and as he is there going out to Arizona one of the people in the dig finds something quite unbelievable in the and they come across in the the chapel uh, or I think it's the either the abbey or the chapel in um, in the village of Castle Guard they come across a bifocal lens and this bifocal lens shouldn't be there if uh, and all for, an, or for all intents and purposes they do uh, information checks on it um, try to verify that nobody else had contaminated the dig and it was the only person who was wearing bifocal lenses would have been the professor and they date the bifocal lens to have been there for approximately six, uh, over 600 years as well as finding a uh, fi finding a note to say that he is stuck in the year 1357 and that he needs rescuing and he needs help so initially they think that somebody's put somebody's put uh, a, a crew a crew joke on on the um on the dig staff um you know and uh, as as for the purposes of the plot it, that isn't the point so the four characters so you get five characters then we're introduced also to another character by david stern stern is your um tech guy in the in the dig crew he is clued up on uh, carbon dating he is the one who verifies the information that this bifocal lens had been there for 600 years plus and uh, that this uh, this note from the professor is genuine so they decide to go out to Arizona they um, they are um, they are picked up by a character by the name of Gordon now Gordon is is your assistant to Robert Dong Doninger the ITC company man so this assistant Gordon is the ones who, who breaks it to the team that they sent the professor not back through time um, as they explain in the book the time travel is impossible but what they've managed to do is in in ITC and in this tech um, uh, this tech company is to use quantum technology um, and able and they're able to use uh, wormholes in order to get into uh, different parts of what we would consider the past 
uh, as is, as is explained there are multiple existing uh, multiverse, as, as they say in the multiverse theory there are multiple different universes existing uh, uh, concurrently with each other so for instance uh, there's a multiverse where I'm not, I'm not recording this video right now and that I'm doing something else there's a, another multiverse where I'm a millionaire um, fucking hell, I wish it was this this multiverse this one there's another one where uh, there's a world war currently raging there's another multiverse where there's no pandemic all, all sorts so you understand you're able they were, and, and as they describe in the book uh, you are not able to transport yourself as you are into that time period and leave nothing here you are deconstructed as a molecular organism within this reality and then re reassembled on the other end if that makes sense um, so that is effectively how they've managed to put somebody from now or as it was then in the 90s to 1357 so it's explained uh, and the ITC president Don Donninger said we have to get the professor back uh, so they say as they do you know they send in a team the team consists of David Stern the IT guy decides to stay with Gordon the ITC sort of second in command uh, guy to say listen I'm going to handle things on, on our end here make sure that you your return is safe um, and I'll obviously try and find out more information about this technology and about what's going on so that explains why ITC were able to find out certain information about the site and the dig they were all they had already sent a team back on multiple times to the time period of 1357 there are as is explained in the book I don't know whether it was hinted at the sequel or not but there are different sites across the world where this is the case where they were able to reassemble people at certain points in time at certain events in, hi in history um, so anyways uh, the people who go back in time is Chris, Kate, Andre Marek and then there are two representatives security experts who go back into time so effectively what well, they get they're given the cl uh, close of the time they are fitted with earpieces so that they could hear people speaking to them in Occitan or uh, as they said uh, as, as, as it was called then Middle French um, so that was very similar to like say how Elizabethan Engl English uh, thou thou the and that uh, and they uh, we don't really use that anymore similar in French there was a uh, middle French language that was used at the time so they could hear in in, in, the, in the earpieces the only one who can speak Occitan really is, is Andre Marac um, and initially when they go back into t when they go back into 1357 immediately they're attacked by uh, a knight on horseback who is chasing a young boy it seems so the group split up you have Chris who gets sidetracked and is led away by the boy away from this knight the knight is the one that kills uh, one of the male uh, security uh, agents he had t brought with him a grenade and he had tried to deploy the grenade before the the knight killed him at the same time as he's trying to deploy the grenade one of the one of the key paths that they have in order to to come back and forth out, out of this time period he activates that the grenade goes back to 1999 and blows up the the uh the the uh, the, what do you call it? how can I describe it the sort of their their pods and their portals that they were able to you know travel safely back from the present back to 1357 so they're pretty fucked they in 1357 they know they've got about uh, 72 hours I think it was 70 hours or so before um, effectively they would there wouldn't be any opportunity for them to come back so back in the modern day they trying to they're going to, you've got Stern and Gordon desperately trying to find out what's going on and to try and rebuild these po pods and portals to make sure that they can bring the team back back into 1357 you've got Kate and Kate and Andre Marek they are um, split up from Chris Chris follows this boy away uh, to Castle Guard so and in the process of speaking to this um, this boy it's revealed that the, that uh, Chris said it can um, 
due to his lack of knowledge about what the term gentle means confirms that he's a, that he's a, no, a, a noble or a gentleman hence why he's treated quite lavishly when he gets to castle guard and he um comes he then uh, provokes the ire of uh, lord oliver devan who is the english commander of the castle uh Cri sorry and then andre Ma uh, marak and kate end up going to the uh, abbey um, where they look to find where the professor had gone which is where in the modern day they found the bifocal lenses and the message they come across the professor and they find him however they then are um, they then are arrested by uh, Oliver Devan's men and they come across a knight by the name of De Care. so De Care immediately d takes a massive dislike doesn't like the professor and nor does he like these other two strangers who have just appeared from nowhere seemingly um, Chris when he's in castle guard at this time comes uh, and the boy who rescues him is is revealed not to be a boy but to be Lady Claire who is the betrothed um, sort of local gentle woman to Lord Oliver's second in command so effectively this Lord Oliver is, is entertaining this Lady Claire because she's she's going to be marrying his number two um, he, Chris provokes uh, it, it, not so much provokes but is provoked into uh, a combat situation where he then confirms for his honour and the honour of Lady Claire that he will uh, go to combat with Sir Guy so this Sir Guy he is the one Sir Guy de Malagant he is uh, betrothed to Lady Claire um, and he's pissed off just because he thinks Chris is trying to He's trying to get in on his woman, uh, but that is not the case. Uh, Chris uh, defers and knows he's pretty much going to get absolutely gutted because the guy has literally got no horse skills whatsoever. Um, as we come then to the combat situation, the tournament, that, um, we find that Andre Marak, who is skilled in uh, this medieval um, warfare takes on the role of the champion and defeats Sir Guy who is not blessed, best pleased whatsoever um, at this time then we have um, the group begin to escape from Castle Guard and we have at the time then we have uh, the professor is then I believe the professor is then taken by um, Lord Oliver and is asked to make an incendiary weapon um, because what happens before this point is that when you have uh, Kate and I believe it's Kate and Andre escape they are uh, sorry Matt, Andre is Andre is escapes he is kidnapped by the f competing French Lord which is Arno de, de, uh, de Creville, I think it's Creville or Cuvo. Um, they he's interrogated about who they are and what they do in there, um, and effectively he they they they, they allow uh, they allow Andre to go. Um, although to to we, they, what they're trying to find out is both of these lords. There is a disputed tunnel that leads one castle to the other. So like I like I said earlier, you've got Castle Guard and La Rock. Um, and there's a river uh, that, that flows through the two castles hence why they're across uh, competing sides of the river now there is there is a claim and a, and a suspicion that there is a, a connected a connected tunnel between the two castles and that uh, the professor Johnson from the future actually knows where this tunnel is and he does so you've got uh, you have at this point then Kate and Chris and Andre they go to uh, a local mill, um, water mill. After they they try to find the information from a local priest who had been sheltering uh, the professor. He dies unfortunately, but gives a couple of clues to this water mill. They go to the water mill, and Andre, Chris, and Kate happen to know pretty much. They get the the hints about where the tunnel is, which is in a place called the Green Chapel. So. 
unfortunately they are um, arrested and interrogated by Arno like I say Arno's men Arno is unable to uh, find out the source of this um, this tunnel um, uh, but they managed Chris and uh, Kate managed to escape and wouldn't you know it they get to the green chapel and there's this absolutely crazy uh, knight who like like a tale in folklore is pining for his dead wife and will for some reason murder anybody who tries to set foot in this green chapel uh, or anybody within the vicinity so the guy's obviously psychotic and uh, fortunately Chris and Kate overcome him and kill him and they're able to access in the green chapel then they're able to access the actual tunnel that goes from La Roque all the way to Castle Guard at the same time at the same time then we have uh, Andre is uh, Andre uh, manages to get his way back to uh, Castle Guard and um, he and the professor then begin to make an incendiary weapon so in order to stay in the favour of the, the English Lord Oliver Devan the professor pr um, promises to make what's called Greek fire now Greek fire is um, is an incendiary explosive device explosive sort of um, not, not device sorry an explosive um, weapon that was used from in the Middle Ages people th there is dispute about what, what Greek fire actually was I mean there are people who because it wasn't actually written down per se there were different derivatives of what people call Greek fire effectively it was like a, a precursor to uh, napalm so where the term Greek fire comes from where you would have the Greek ships the tri uh, the 3M ships would actually shoot this sort of jelly jelly like um, explosive or uh, incendiary fire that would uh, attach itself to the uh, mainly wooden ships of the enemy and more water pouring onto it would pretty much cause the the um, cause the object to f to become more engulfed in flames so effectively it's like you've got I think the what they talk about in the book is saltpeter is one of the, the the main components of it if you add water to it then it is going to pretty much go poof it's just going to go up so that's what's going on at the moment you've got them trying to make Greek fire for uh, Oliver Oliver Devan and what we have what we have then is um, pretty much the clock is ticking at the time they've got less than a few hours before the um, they're able to even travel back to 1999 and oops, sorry let me just turn on my uh, charger a second oh there you are sorry so they I've got a countdown about when they're able to travel back to um, to 1999 and what we have at this point now is um, Arno the French Lord is attacking and setting up uh, trebuchets and setting up all siege weaponry in order to show Lord Oliver that he, he is doing what he says he's doing the professor launches um, these incendiary weapons and destroys quite a few of the siege weapons from uh, uh, of the French in history the professor understands and Andre knows that the inevitable outcome of the siege is that the French win and that the English are driven out of uh, away from La Roque and Castle Guard so it, in order not to try and change the history and to change the events of war had gone on he ensures that you know it's all well and good saying oh well I can show you how to make a machine gun but that isn't the purpose of what they're trying to do the purpose of what they were trying to do is to make uh, a particular type of weapon that was contemporary for the time that was specialized but known so that you know that's where the Greek fire comes from so at the same time Kate and um, Chris managed to find their way through the tunnel um, all the way to uh, Castle Guard, I think it's ca uh, one of the main castles uh, where they're being attacked at the moment. They reconnect with the Professor and and Andre. Uh, you have then 
the French proper attacking and there's absolute chaos going on uh, going on at the time um, all the while this has been going on there's been uh, disruptions and there's been a possibility where there's been an ITC employee an, em an employee or somebody from the future is also in the past and they didn't know who he was or which one it is and it's actually revealed to be De Care, the Knight De Care, who hates the Andre and Chris, and particular Andre, and uh, he's revealed to be uh, an ITC employee who, like the fella at the start of the book, who uh, was found in the desert, somebody who'd either gone into the past too many times, had been constructed and then deconstructed too many times, and is totally fucked up all of his uh, internal organs, is um and De Care is is pretty much shown to be a bit of a schizo and a bit of a psychopath in this and that he's trying to prevent the team from uh going back and uh he wants to keep them in 1357 or at least kill them before they can uh get back so we have uh, a fight then between the two main lords oliver and arno uh are fighting it out you've got the professor is kept in a cage and luckily Chris and Andre are able to um, get him out of there and what happens then is we have uh, Kate and on Kate Chris and the professor are just about to activate um, the uh, I can't remember what it's called now it's it activate the um, basically the pods and everything to come back to take them back to 1999 and just before that Chris is, is confronted by De Care and Chris manages to kill him thankfully with ex with the uh, incendiary device that the pre professor had previously made there so they've thankfully they've been able to maintain the final outcome of the siege De Care is killed the uh, or Decker the ITC employee um, thankfully in the in the present time that Gordon and Stern had managed to repair the uh, the chambers and the pods ready to bring all of them back if need be um, but out of the four only three return so in order to allow the other three to escape it is it, you know you'd see in the end of the book that Marek uh, who had this Marek um, Andre Marek sorry who had this absolute fascination loved um, this time period the hundred years war medieval France actually says that he will stay there and uh, he decides to actually stay in 1357 and live his life there um, Professor Chris and uh, Kate are happily brought back to 1999 and when they go to have a debrief with Doninger the, the owner and the tech president of ITC pretty much tells him to go go fuck off and says well that's just shit luck thankfully you're home but you know I don't want you talking to anybody about what technology we've got or what you've gone through you're gonna have to sign a, a non-disclosure agreement well one of the best parts of the mo of the uh, the book is that um, towards the end of the book uh, Gordon uh, the second in command they send Doninger back not to 1357 but to 1348 which is at the, at the time of uh, 1348 they send him back to the same place Castle Guard um, but in that period if you know your history there is uh, the Great Plague was the Black Death was sweeping across Europe pretty much killing I think it was killing one in three people um, back then uh, as we know the uh, the actual plague was generated by um, was carried along to Europe by plague rats and uh, caused disgusting sort of buboes as they call these things that hang over your arms and that you lots of swelling choking on your own blood and basically the shutdown of your internal organs as well um, yeah it's really nasty but anyways donning out the ITC uh, prayers the descent back to that time period they later find out there's a bit of a wrap up to the book they you later find out that when Chris and Kate who do form in the book a bit of a uh, a, a, ro a romantic sort of attraction to each other it's not overly romantic but it's kind of like a sort of mutual respect and appreciation for each other's uh, each other as they 
you know they're in high danger scenarios they you know she grows on him and he grows on her um whereas there was nothing nothing at all like that at the start of the book and in the end it's revealed that kate is pregnant uh the kate the professor and chris meet up in um in england and it's revealed that marek died um i think about 25 years after the events of um 1357 and he died in England with his with Lady Claire, who yeah, the, so the 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 boy who initi or the boy who met Chris at the start of the book, uh, who, who was revealed to be Lady Claire, and she then uh, you know that that's where all that jousting and the tournament came from. She married Marek at the end, and he 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 did what he wanted to. He lived his life where he want where he thought he he could live. I, I did think that they were, I will be honest, there is an absolutely fantastic passage in the book um, towards the end where Doninger is giving a speech to investors of the company who I don't think Do, Do, Doninger is preparing to make the quantum technology and the sort of the time, not the time travel, but the multiverse tourism uh, public. And what he says is quite interesting i think it's very very true in that people are when people become bored with entertainment um people are bored with movies people become bored with new new music when people are given saturated amounts of copious content like we've had particularly over the um the pandemic of the last two years people start to require authenticity authenticity to cut through the mire of the just sheer amount of creative um output so it could be computer games it could be movies it could be tv series whatever it is and you, you've seen that you've seen a bit of a hybrid you know where you know I, I wouldn't really call it reality tv but you know the sort of reality tv crap where you've got stuff like the only way is essex uh jersey shore geordie shore these things are pretty much scripted but they are labeled authentic what donning is saying is that no people genuinely want authentic experiences they don't want to just visit the the pyramids they want to go back to ancient egypt they don't want to just see uh the eiffel tower they want to go back to his, to to when it was you know erected they want to see you know they want to go back to these time periods experience what they can you know without any sort of um any hazards uh, attached to it and uh, that is the last sort of frontier of actual authenticity would be time travel tourism which you know i think that you know i mean we just don't we just don't know you know the possibility of that whatsoever but um do, well as far as i'm aware we that you know nobody has come back from the future to tell us that that's possible and nobody's nobody in the past uh nobody in the present has gone back to the past to find out so as far as we're concerned it doesn't it, you know it doesn't happen so anyways but I, I i did like the book overall i thought it was i thought it was fantastic it's very very um uh, michael Crichton-esque in the sense that like i said earlier you've got the undercurrent of um of action layered with this cutting edge uh um cutting edge science science at the time like quantum technology now the book was the book was like i say published in um in 1999 they made a film of it in 2003 which was pretty crap to be honest um i do know i saw a brilliant video on there's a, a youtube channel i follow and the guy he does a lot of um com uh i can't remember what it's called now the the channel but basically the guy uh, does a lot of comparisons of uh, history movies to see are they accurate you know what you know some of the things in the movie is inaccurate of the time and blah 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 and he, <laughs> he pretty much tore it to shreds um so you know timeline it was a bit of a dumb movie quite frankly um i don't think michael Crichton was actually quite happy with it to be honest either um back in 2003 but you know it, it was just more or less like a bit of a dumb sort of action movie where I think the 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 the, the book would work as a, as more of like a three a three part or maybe even two part um, limited series at the moment. Quite quite honestly, um, I don't think it, it requires a movie, uh, especially a dumb movie like this. I mean, looking at it, it lost a ton of money. You know, the budget, like I say, was eighty million. The box office was only forty four million, if that, and um, it was pretty dumb. You had a lot of 
you know big actors back then uh paul walker jared butler um and you had like david billy Connolly played played the professor so it was it, it wasn't uh too great overall um the book i would suggest you know i've got it on kindle so i got it on kindle for that price as well so 199 i think is a fantastic price actually for uh for the book um you can get a, you can get definitely a physical copy uh, for pretty much hardly anything now so 78 pence for a used one or buy a new one for around eight pound um yeah it's a strange one. i thought this was going to be on audible so i probably would have had it on audible and got through it a lot quicker but in the end kindle was i was happy with the kindle price because it was just so cheap you know and it was a brilliant book as well so i was very happy with this book overall um i one of the things i wanted to comment on as well as the Crichton style is just what i thought was excellent um information that he supplied regarding the medieval period so you can see that there are parts in the plot which are used to um provide what we would consider to be not um not so much updated information by the middle by by the medieval time but sort of recorrected information so that you know we've got we've all got the idea about um i, I, I mean even, even something I, i'd even go into something really small here so one one example would be one of the things that he said in the book which i found quite interesting was there was there was a reason why there was quite a lot of w women and uh, people who were constantly washing and weaving and creating fabrics and cloths and there ne and there had never been as many sort of uh material being made um and until the contem until the modern era than it was back in the medieval times purely because i didn't realize this that you know for lack of any sort of i don't know sanitary t sanitary towels or, or or toilet paper or anything back then people would actually use fabric and then discard the fabric or even wash the fabric and that would like even something like that you know was n i never knew before um even things down to say the fighting styles um uh things down to uh early on in the book where chris uh, you know is mistaken for for being irish because of his accent and also because of the the type of english that he's speaking um you know the sort of the language of occitan was something which i'd never really come across before i knew that there was a a difference between southern french and northern french but i didn't realize that there was a completely different language at the time as well that was being spoken there was no one sort of um like king's french or as we say like a king queen a king king's english or queen's english there were there wasn't one one at the time you had lots of different languages in france at the time you had uh france french sorry uh, middle french as was being primarily spoken in the middle to the north in normandy you had breton which is up in the top west of france you had occitan you had german uh you had flemish dutch spanish lots of different languages being spoken in france at the time as well there and obviously in english as well gaelic and uh, latin as well which is another another main one because of the church and so forth as well um yeah i just thought it was a fantastic book lots of detail by michael Crichton as always he's superb superb writer i gotta be honest and this is the first book i'll do um of his because i've read quite a few others as well and i'll be doing some reviews of them shortly but for this one i'll give it a four out of five i thought timeline was pretty good i wish they could make another movie sorry not another movie a tv series that will do justice and actually paper over that movie that was done in 2003 um if you did enjoy uh if you want to check out you want a bit of a shorthand version of the book you can watch the movie if you want but i would say pick the book up if you can it's cheap enough it's 1.99 on kindle so hopefully you do pick it up and enjoy it but yeah let me know what you think of the book and